clean this place up every single week just for you guys to miss the episode. Here's what you missed. Last time on Graveyard Cars. Doing it in 45 days is a big enough task on its own. Doing it while you're still working on all the other client cars, that's priceless. Everybody's circling this car. People have lost their damn minds. We're not as polished right now because we're truly doing the best we can to keep our word to the customer. There's only one person that knows if we'll get it done, and that's God. I have no idea. This station will remain on the air on this episode. It's always really exciting to do a reveal, but this one I'm a little bit stressed about. It would be really nice if Will didn't think everything I was doing was for the sole purpose of a joke. I'm dying to see this car. You're talking 50 plus years comes down to this moment. That coming get you, Barbara. In Springfield, Oregon, dead Mopar muscle cars are coming back to life. Restored by Mopar master Mark Warman. I'm a liar and a bat mouth. His daughter, Alyssa Rose. <laughs> Why would you do that? His painter, Will Scott. Got yeah, one job. And his cousin, Dougie. Oh, hi, Welcome back to Graveyard Cars. So today's the big day, the big reveal of our 1970 Roadrunner. Mark's on his way to the shop now. Um, he has not seen his car since before we disassembled it. And we've done this build in 45 days. All done? Yep. Sweet. All right. We've done the best we can. We, we've pushed as hard as we can. We're, we're nearing the end of this build, and everybody is just going nuts around here. I have a wonderful question for my crack shot team here. God. So on the Roadrunner, okay. Why is it I would trust you to even clean the wheels in the front bumper on it when you put the springs on the wrong sides of our Phoenix Scooter? No, we didn't. <laughs> it's not possible. OK. I couldn't have done that. We built it right side up to do the brakes, because that was easier. And now to put the leaf springs on, it's upside down and backwards. So shoo, keep up with that. So here's our right hand leaf spring. The leaf springs on the Phoenix Cuda are switched. You put the 024 on the left-hand side, and it should be on the right-hand side, and the 034 that's on the right-hand side should be on the left-hand side. My God, when it, you guys did, it doesn't matter. Let Mark is on his way. We need to finish this and get this cleaned up. Okay, I don't care that Martinez is on his way here to get his car. See, here's the whole thing. Nice shot, by Shut the way. Up. I made here's it. the whole point. I made it. If you take into consideration that we should be doing the best work in the world, and this little thing about the leaf springs is wrong, it's out in front of the world. So in my mind, if you don't like episode six because we have a leaf spring screw up, watch episode seven, okay? Are you sure that we did it wrong? Are you sure it wasn't the way it looked on TV or something? Come on. <sighs> we don't have time. I don't care if you don't have time. We're not gonna put what out another car until we do things right. Oh I want this God. fixed and I want it in this episode. I don't care. So they can all be running around excited and worried and nervous at what Martinez is gonna think about his car. But I'm gonna go lay on them right now that they screwed up. It went out in front of millions of people around the world, and we're gonna clean it up this episode. I have a question for you. What's that part number? 34 triple zero two four. Two four, right? Right. Is a two an odd or an even number? It's an even number. It's an even number. So it should be on the passenger side of the car. Right. Okay. What's that number? 34 zero zero zero. 34. 34. Okay. Uh -huh. Is three an odd or an even number? Odd. An odd number, like you. It should be on the driver's side. Even if this is upside down, they're still on the wrong side. Oh. So you're, th yeah. Dad, why do we need to address this right now? Because there is Mark no tomorrow. Coming. There is no tomorrow. So, Rocky Three, remember when? Uh, <sighs> okay. <laughs> so oh it was, uh, you remember, uh, it was Apollo Creed was trying to train Rocky, but he didn't have no heart, right? And so uh, Rocky keeps saying to Apollo, hey, I'm gonna train tomorrow, I'm gonna train tomorrow. And Apollo screams out, there is no tomorrow! And then they cut to the next scene where Rocky's standing in front of the mirror and he's repeating it in his head. There is no tomorrow, there is no tomorrow. And he's banging the mirror like that. Yeah. But what about his dog? Whose dog? Rocky's dog. Buckus? Yeah. What the hell about him? Well, that's what I was talking about. So here we are on uh, delivery day for our 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. Everybody's been working around the clock. The 70 Roadrunner, you see setting there, 
completed. And the only reason I'm not up right now doing my usual shindig, shenanigans, whatever they're called, I'm exhausted. Okay, here it comes, huh? It's a big one. You like that hand slapping? That's good, isn't it? Uh -huh. Producer hates it when I do that because it's loud. It's, they say something's wrong with me with that nervous no one laughter, likes but that. listen to how loud it is. What? It's always really exciting to do a reveal, but this one I'm a little bit stressed about just because we didn't have the amount of time that we usually have. And even with the normal amount of time, we always have little things go wrong. So I'm over here kind of biting my nails. You know, I hope Mark likes his car. You know, I hope this goes well. Oh, see, that one even got me right there a little bit. That's funny. Yeah. I can't wait for him to get here and see his car, because he's a businessman, and he's going to tell us I exactly how he feels. When he gets here, he's got to take in an awful lot of stuff. Dude, he's not going to with us. He'll tell us. Don't ever say the S word around me. What? Yes. Businessman? He's a businessman? Businessman starts with an S? <laughs> what country? We've been working some really long hours on this car, and uh, after hours, and weekends, and... Uh, uh, you know, we, we have really pushed through this car, and I hope it's good enough for Mr. Martinez. Every detail was finished, and from what I can tell, to perfection. The real final detail is him coming in and his response to it, and that's why we're all walking around a little bit on pins and needles. There's a man of the hour right there. Hey. Mr. <laughs> Marcus Martinez, how are you, brother? Well, came to get my car. It's so emotional, I, I really can't even describe it to you. You know, this is this is definitely a full circle kind of thing in my life. You know? So you uh, pretty excited? Are you kidding me? How long have you been waiting to see your baby now? Since 1973, when I traded it in, and uh, I I haven't been able to sleep the last few nights. <laughs> but I, I wish that everybody had the experience to work with a complex project like this and watch a, a true professional do his craft. I don't think I can isolate on any one particular thing that's really going to drive me on this thing. As the memories come back to me, there's just going to be such an overwhelming, it's going to be a very overwhelming experience. John. It just says an awful lot about leadership. Good. You know, and... Uh, just talking about leadership. <laughs> yeah. All right, anyways, let's do the car. He does not strike me as the kind of guy that's going to water anything down. If there's something that's not right, he's going to hit me between the eyes with it. All right. You ready to go see a car? <laughs> Let's go out and take a look at a car, buddy. All right, here we go. Into the fray. This whole build is full of firsts. Building a car in 45 days, that's a first. So we got her all covered up. Wow. The cover that you see right now is tailor-made specifically to your car. The thing that makes this a first is he did not want to see any progress pictures. I'm dying to see this car. You're talking 50 plus years comes down to this moment. Okay, so here comes a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner in Alpine white. When he looks at the car today, is it the right white that he was remembering from 55 years ago? I know I painted it EW1, which is the only white that was available. Maybe somebody painted his car back in the day. I don't know. With a V21 hood sport treatment, V1X black top with black interior. <laughs> he hasn't seen the vinyl top in person. He hasn't seen the interior in person. He hasn't seen any, he hasn't seen anything, either in person or in a photograph, I should say. Everybody's very nervous. What can a guy say about that? So the reaction on Martinez's face was priceless. When we uncovered that car, you just looked over and you saw the reaction on his face. He was blown away. It's meant to be that. <laughs> it's meant to be that. It's way more. If it takes your breath away, that's yeah. what it's meant to do. Holy crap. <laughs> That thing is that is just stunning? Oh my God. Pictures don't even begin no. to tell no. the story of that car. That is just pure art. So what you'll see is that the the paintwork is a PPG concept single stage can paint. Can touch it? You can. You'll be touching it a lot in the future, absolutely. <laughs> the hood blackout is based on the original hood sport treatment that your car had. You had photos of your car. I used that to rebuild this car. Oh. Black vinyl top. Your car was air conditioning. This one is air conditioning, so it has tinted glass. It's brand new replica glass from ECS Automotive, and it's date coated. Your car did not have the dust trail stripe down the no. side. It just had the running bird, right. so they are in place. 
your car you wanted Kragers on because that's what you put on after the fact, right? Uh -huh. So there are your Krager five spoke. They are a 15.8 in the back and a 15.7 in the front with BF Goodrich TA radials. Wow. This it's a lot to take in. I just blabber, so don't worry about me. This I just, thing is just so It sits amazing. there like a piece of jewelry, doesn't it? Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Oh, I love mm. them. I'm going to move that into the living room. <laughs> yes. Wow. It'll be a great showpiece for wow. your heart, but also for your business when you do go to the trade shows yeah. and you want to flex a little muscle. That will be a car that you will wow. not see another one like it anywhere ever. Wow. wow. And that's because I... of one thing. Graveyard Cars did it, and we do it. We do it to the best ability we have. You it know, may not uh, be Mark. perfect, but it's as good as we can make it. Can I ask you something? Yes, sir. When when I approached you about a white one, I mean, because everybody's going, Why I wasn't a form? fan. I, nobody was a fan. I wasn't and a I, fan. I go, you know what? I'm not doing it for you. I'm doing this for me. You know. And the but... way, the only reason I became a fan of the white was when you told me the story. Mm -hmm. about you and your brother and growing up in it those right. two years you had the car and the pictures you had and, and those are the things that I, I want to try to do that for people because I would like it done for me <coughs> to do unto others Absolutely. if I could find my old burn orange charger which oh. I can't I'm afraid the old girl's gone yeah. but one day I'll treat myself to a replica of it <laughs> and I'll and I'll cry just like you and and I'll feel all those emotions and it's okay yeah, because there's plenty of time for all the other stuff. These are tears of just pure joy and, and pure memory, pure... Wait till you're just buzzing you know, it down just... the road, listening to the same old songs that you and your oh brother listen to. Led Zeppelin on the A-track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, Stairway yeah. to Heaven. A whole lot of love. Well, speaking of a whole lot of love, would you like to see a whole lot of 392 Hemi under the hood? <laughs> <laughs> the all-new 1969 and a half Dodge Super B, known as the A12 model, began showing up on dealership floors in the spring of 1969. The standard equipment was a 410 day in the rear end, a Holley three two barrel setup on top of the 440 known as the 446 pack. A cold air induction fiberglass lift off hood was also standard. You could get the car with a four speed or an automatic transmission. The wheels were a 15 by six painted black, no wheel covers, just exposed chrome lug nuts. Now, Plymouth also built an A12 car. What model was their A12 car based on? Was it the Satellite, GTX, Roadrunner? If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break. We'll let you know. All right, my ghoulish friends, how did we do on that one? The A12 package car, like the Super B, was available in a Plymouth model. What Plymouth model was it? If you guessed Roadrunner, you were right, and you've been paying attention. The Super B and the Roadrunner were always sisters from their inception in 1968. They were both a medium price class car. The Roadrunner, just like our beautiful Super B, came standard with a 410 Dana rear end. You could order a four speed or an automatic transmission. But you were guaranteed a 390 horsepower 446 back or six barrel if it's a Plymouth engine. Lift off cold air induction fiberglass hood, steel wheels, red line tires. Everything that was available on the B was available on the Roadrunner. It's just that the first two digits of that order would be RM instead of WM. So now you know a little something something about the A12 cars. Remember what Tom Cullen says. M-O-O-N, that spells Mopar. This is the 2019 Mopar Performance Crate Engine. 392 cubic inch, exact same one you would get if you bought a new Challenger. Okay. Puts out 475 horsepower. In 1970, a 426 Hemi, which you didn't have, only put out 425. Wow. And this is a small block. As you look around, you'll see a lot of original stuff, though. So. If you look here, this, I remember this. Yep, that's the original purple yeah. beep beep horn, original power brake booster and master cylinder, but 
and, and original lines, but after that, it all becomes four-wheel disc brakes for you. So when you pop that hood, we try to keep as much organic, original stuff under here as possible. Oh, it, it really shows more. Northern I mean. Radiator custom built this radiator for us so that it would stay, this engine would stay cool. So we ran this the other day for half an hour and it never got over 190 degrees, just enough to open the thermostat. Cool. We have a hood insulation pad factory. The other things you'll notice in here, we replaced all yeah. the original information labels and you can see right there, I've got my date. This is the right. <laughs> <laughs> Over here is the original fender tag. As we know, this is an original Roadrunner and it was a different color than this, but this right. is the original tag. Awesome. A replica from ECS of the original idling instructions, idle fuel air mixture instructions. Making the air conditioning system was always tricky. We end up making our own hoses oh, in a lot of cases. Does. It's okay. Because originally this is a big old V8 in there. It had this great big compressor on the top. Well now with this engine, the compressor is just a small aluminum one that mounts way down here. Holy moly. So all that plumbing over there is for your air conditioning. Uh -huh. And that is your ECM. So your fuse panel for your controller for the engine, it's easy access under the hood. Just like So that's on. the that's the computer. That's a few yeah, the computer's back there, uh -huh. and the control panel for it's right there. So if you blow a fuse, it's right there. This is just art. I mean, <laughs> I collect art, too. Oh, good. You know, so... Good. I'm Can you very... take Dougie with you? Because <laughs> we've always kind of considered him a form of art. Yeah. <laughs> so, we know that your car originally started life with a 383. Right. And this has got the 392. Right. It was long before they thought of the 392 crate engine. So in your car, you told me you had turn signal indicators in the back of the hood. Right. And of course, if it was a 383, then right here in the back, it would say 383. Yeah. Right. So take a look at what we did for you here. I reached out to our oh, friends down wow. at Phoenix Graphics and they made so us cool. a three-dimensional graphic that calls out 392 Hemi. And that, you is, that is just... Only one in the world like it. And you've got your turn signal indicators in there still too. Wow. That is, so now when you're driving, that's what you get to see. Holy moly. There's I'm, a, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm so humble. It's a good thing. Oh, man. I love it. Yeah. So on the trunk, it's detailed out just like an original trunk would be. Now, you've got Kreger wheels on the car. That's by choice. But you also had us build you a set of the replica 15-7 rally rims with right. beauty rings and center caps. Right. Right. If you had that, then the spare would be painted black, and it would be a Goodyear polyglass spare. Right. That's what you're going to see. <laughs> so that's yeah. your Goodyear polyglass replica spare, brand new jack, jack base, and jack hook from Tony's Mopar Parts. Now, with this engine, we could not keep the battery up here like you would in a normal car. So mm. the old drag racers, you probably remember, mm -hmm. would relocate them to the trunk. We did yeah. the same thing. Okay. Original jacking instructions. Wow. Mopar painted the inside of their trunk's body color, unlike everybody else. Right. Brand X, their garbage that. job. So everything in this trunk is exactly the way it started life it, it in 1970. Back. I used to load this thing full of construction cords. <laughs> My nail trunk. bags would be here, and I would have a 50 pound bag, I mean, box of nails, and I would have my skill saw sitting right there. People at home saying, what, what, you put tools in there? Back then, it was a $3,000 car, and it was your main mode of transportation. It, was, it, it yeah. wasn't a, a showpiece. It, it was a dra daily driver. We it, just have a hard right, time conceiving right. that. This is a wow. uh, Phoenix Graphics Stripe. It is the correct replica of the original one. Yeah. And what you'll see is it's reflective. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. when those lights hit that, it's reflective. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. The exhaust system is TTI headers into three inch collectors. They provided the entire exhaust system right up to the exhaust yes. tips. I had to get those from a different source. We actually got them from Classic Industries. And we cut their original turndown tips on and put those on because your car had bright exhaust tips on it. It would have been standard equipment on the Roadrunner. Right. Yeah, this is just bringing back so many memories, man. I mean, it's, I feel as giddy as walking into that dealership and being able to drive this car. We all had that feeling when yeah. we got our first car. Yeah. It was, oh God. It's a giddy read. feeling. I yep. mean, I, di I didn't even know what to do. I was like a dog chasing his tail. You know, I just, <laughs> you know, didn't know what to do. There's was... the ignition key. How about you have a seat down in there and we'll talk about the interior. Wow. He is overwhelmed. 
He is, from what I can tell, like I said, he don't pull punches. He is excited. He is in love. A couple things before I let you sit down. This is a replica again from ECS Automotive of the original wow. VIN for the door. Wow. The only one company in the world reproduces them and we get them from them. You have an original over here, tire pressure warning label. Everything is meant to be the way it was in wow. 1970. This is a replica of the original paper <laughs> mat that you would have got the day you went into your dealership. Are you serious? I'm gonna unroll it a little so it'll actually lay out. Yeah, again, ECS is making these. So now you have that. I did a pedal dress up kit so you have the bezels, a little chrome around the bezels and the parking brake bit. Also, I didn't remember if you had the wood grain, but we gave you the wood grain wheel. Classic Industries makes a beautiful replica. I didn't, I didn't have, I, you had the black plastic. I had the black, but I like that one way more than yes. This is why we do what we do. This is why I'm involved here at Graveyard Cars. This is what matters to me. It was, a, it was awesome. So yeah. ha have a seat, my friend. Take a look at the gauges. I'll turn the park lights on so you can actually see the gauges. There you go. Oh, wow, more. So here you have your TikTok tachometer. We did a quartz conversion in it, so it'll actually work like it's supposed to. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we had our friends at Instrument Specialties actually modify it so that this would play well with the engine, and it wow. does, your tack works. You have all of your full gauges, AM, FM radio, all the air conditioning buttons at the top. You have your meat, meat horn. <laughs> now, you stay right there because there's something I want to show you. Marcus, if you don't mind, I want you to look at this right here. It's okay, man. He's always with you, brother. Always. Oof. And that's what it's all about. I just wish he was here. It's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always riding around with you. Make sure he doesn't get you in any more trouble than he did back in the day, okay? <laughs> I know, you told you me some of those stories. Oh, man. Yeah, he was... Uh... As we get older, and I've noticed it with me, my mom passed away a couple years ago here. You know, we spend the first half of our lives trying to get away from home. And I think we spend the second half of our lives trying to get back. <laughs> so yeah, that's a, that was just something I felt like. He needs to be shotgun with you at all times. You told me you called him it Ed. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, so I think at the end of the day, wow. we've been able to oh. yeah, I would, reboot I would your memories. Say that, I would say that this went way past. You're a good guy. This, this went way, way past, you know? And the thing is, is you're an amazing, amazing man with what you do. You literally, you, you just bring dreams to, to, to fruition in a way that is just overwhelming. It's just overwhelming. I, I'm humble. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. But you, I, your reaction is uh, all the is, thanks I need. And, uh, you know, one thing is to do a car right. That's what we get paid to do. Yeah. But I think if you can just help that person get some of those memories, keep them alive or get them back, then what a well, victory that's, for yeah, that's all, what all of us, right? That's what it all comes That's all we down have at the end. That's, that's it. Yeah, it, it just, the greatest gift in the world to me is memories. Yeah. It, the thing is, without them, why you here? Yeah, why, right. Why you here? Why are you bothering if you're not making something real? Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll be forever in your debt, Mark. Yeah. Forever in your debt. One great thing this morning was it was a little bit quiet when I first got in, and I was able to get the car out, start it up, warm it up, and go on a test drive. The gears feel good. This is the uh, six speed transmission that we get from our friends over at Silver Sport. It's a Tremec that's been modified to fit perfectly in the center opening of a B-body floor. We can even use the B-body shifter handle with it, the pistol grip. So here we go. So far good, no rattles, first gear. Nice quick shift to second, felt good. Car's tracking nice and straight down the road. I've got good oil pressure, 60 pounds. Actually, make that 80 pounds at an idle. Temperature's running 185-ish right now. TikTok tack is working great. Okay, first gear feels nice. 
second gear shift feels good. Very nice, feels good. Boy, that rack and pinion is nice. See, now that's that Magnum Force coil over front suspension, so we don't use our torsion bars anymore. And we have a power rack and pinion. The integral steering is gone. And because of that, that thing moves like that, like it's on rails. Just can't get over how nice that holds the road. These are, you know, these are a pretty good sized car, these B bodies. I mean, the E bodies are a good sized car too compared to today's junk that's on the road. But typically, these haven't been known for incredible handling. Feels good, second gear, 30 miles an hour. Let's give it a little throttle. Yeah, nice. This 392 puts out 485 horsepower. It's feeling really nice. No weird vibrations from the tires. Handling the road like it's supposed to, shifting like it's supposed to. That's just a nice idle. According to this, it's about 900 RPM. It's a really nice first drive. Every gauge working, heat work, AC, wipers, steering. I love the turn signal indicators in the back of the hood. That is just the coolest feature. Mopar always the coolest. I mean, yeah, Grant and Grano, they had great colors, all the cool stuff, but just everything together as a package made these such a neat car. It's no wonder a kid just fell in love with them. I don't know why more kids didn't, because around town here in Springfield, there weren't very many Mopars at all. Me and Doug had about the only ones at the high school besides a couple other kids. Everybody else was Chevy Freaks and Mustangs. Plain hamburger, no identity stuff, you know? People who, who had no aspirations to do anything with their lives, they'd drive Camaro. Well, that was back then. Now, obviously, it's different. I, I wanted to be able to go on a test drive before Mark got here for obvious reasons, but my intention is to have Mark ride with Alyssa. Alyssa's the new QC manager. That means she is now in the crosshairs where old Mark Warman used to be. Oh, this thing is insane. I mean, insane. I can tell. You, you yeah. didn't want a Prius? <laughs> no, a uh, Volt. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. So you're a little shook. You're, whoa. I'm figuring out how I'm going to learn how to drive the damn thing. You know what I mean? But this thing is not made for around town driving. It, it runs that strong. It runs very strong. Talk about adrenaline the whole time you're driving in this car, though. Oh. Right? Like. Hello. You just tell oh. her so much power. I seriously thought I was on the start line of the Daytona 500. It, it had a feeling of intimidation and just extreme power. That is pretty damn crazy. So compared to the original engine that was in it? No, no comparison. No. <laughs> no comparison. So you didn't expect this? No. No, this is, this is way the hell over the top. <laughs> I mean, holy moly. You know, I was able to put my foot a little bit in it, but it pinned me so hard to the seat that I just backed right back out of it. It's a, uh, it's a machine. It's nothing I'll let anybody drive, I'll tell you that. You know, it's uh, it's insane. It's fast, huh? Pretty crazy. You can tell it just wants to go. That's all it wants to do. Yeah. The shoulder strap wasn't a bad idea. Yeah. Woo! That feels, that is so cool. You don't get that in another car. You don't get no. that. No. That pull, as soon as you feel that pull back, it's like the butterfly is like, <laughs> woo, okay. <laughs> This is cool, girl. This is cool. Your pops is the <laughs> He's OK sometimes, I guess. So as I've mentioned, there's a lot of things going on at Graveyard Cars at one time. So while Mark and Alyssa are out driving the 1970 Roadrunner, I wanted to take a minute and talk about a 1971 Roadrunner with Will, who's gonna be painting this car very, very soon. 
This is a really cool, unique car that I want to share all of the knowledge that I have on it so far with Will. So you know how on a 1970 to 74 e-body, the vehicle identification hidden numbers are right here? Yes. In this case, they're over here on this lip, which would make faking one of these a whole lot easier. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Drill you those spot welds out and this it off. Right. Just, yeah. That's right. And then spot welded on the new one. So there are bad people out there that do things like that all day long. Mark has decided to pull me from my important job of painting to come out here and do a walk around on a Roadrunner. Not sure exactly why, but anything to uh, disrupt my day, he'll jump in the middle of to make sure it happens. From the firewall forward, the 71 to 74B body is very similar, if not almost identical. To an E-body? To an E-body, that's yeah. right. Yeah, you know the answer you throw right out I there. I did. Yeah, well, I told you that earlier. You no, just, you all you're doing is reminding me of what I already Don't said. Uh, I know it needs to get primered. Well, you just touched that. All right. It would be really nice if Will didn't think everything I was doing was for the sole purpose of a joke. All right, I do like to have fun, and I do like to be lighthearted, but I'm also trying to teach him something that is very important. Yeah. And what exactly are the e-body cars? Kudas, Challengers. You say it with more authority, because you seem like you're kind of guessing. No. OK, Kudas. Challengers. And Challengers, that's right. And what year represents the e-body? The important ones. Uh -huh. See, you shouldn't be shooting stuff out like you're all that in a bag of chips. I'm okay. not. There's really no point in being out here. He does take you around and show you cool things that I, I don't know. But the problem is, A, I don't have the time, and B, he's a horrible teacher. Now, this car's a 1971 Roadrunner. They call it the Coke bottle style. Well, this and the Charger, the 71, 74 B bodies, they were calling the Coke bottle style. Because uh, I think that's because if you go way up in the air on a lift and you were to look down on the car, it kind of has that shape to it, kind of like an hourglass or a Coke bottle. Why he doesn't take the time to study the car and the fender tag and the history behind it. Just take a second and take a look at that fender tag. 446 barrel, four speed manual transmission, black bucket seat interior, EV2, tour red, power disc brakes, hood pins, inside hood release, this car's rear spoiler car, turn signal indicators, performance hood treatment. It's got the over the roof stripe on it. The car is absolutely loaded. So when you take all those things into consideration and you add that option list to one of the 130 37, in all likelihood, this could be a one of one 1971 446 barrel four speed roadrunner. I think he needs to be paying attention to that. The other things that make this car very, very unique, besides the shape of the body, is. Stay tuned after the break. <laughs> oh, that, I thought that was a. The Let car. me ask you this. Oh. What, what option could you get in 1971 on a B body like this beautiful car right here? Actually, I, I just. What model? could you get in a 71 B body that would have guaranteed you a 440 Super Commando guaranteed or an optional Hemi? Right, Same call... body style. Okay, let me call Tony. Same length, width, height, identical. Should I just have to call Tony? You can call Tony all you want, but he... well, Tony should know that, yeah. Yeah, I know, so I just got but, why, but you're the guy running around here saying you know all this no, stuff. No, I've yeah. never once yeah. done that. It's called a GTX, the GTX model, which was introduced in 1968. So the folks that own this car, they live on the East Coast. They personify everything great about car families, all right? They, they love cars and they have forever. So this family still has Mopars. They've drag raced them since the 70s. They had an old eight millimeter home movie of that car drag racing in New England at a drag strip. One of the things that they did was at about halfway through the show, they brought all the funny cars out into the middle of the track and started them up at one time. So, so until you've heard 33 top fuel funny cars running at the same time, you haven't lived. That's what this whole trip and journey Graveyard Cars is about, is bringing back those memories, and glorifying them. It's OK, right? There's some of the best times in our life. It's a great car with a great family and a great backstory, and probably the first time in Graveyard Cars history that I have a actual 8 millimeter home movie of the original car that we're restoring being raced from the late 70s. That is just plain cool. All right, class on the 1971 Plymouth Roadrunner 446 barrel four speed is Ah, sure. I learned something today. I learned I need to find a better hiding spot. So we have learned that the 1969 and a half Dodge Super B and its sister, the A12 Roadrunner, were really neat cars. Great options from the factory. First time the 440 showed up with three two-barrel Hollies, fiberglass lift-off hood, Dana 60 standard. 
I told you that you could order it with a four-speed or an automatic transmission. A true or false, you could also get it with a manual three-speed transmission. If you think you know that answer, stay tuned after the commercial break, and we will let you know how you did. What's this? Welcome to my hell. Uh, where are we? Where's the dining room? Boy, it sure is hot in. Out. Here. What the? Uh, run for it. I'll cover you. Let's get out of here. Don't push it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. So anyway, I tells the little chick, look, yes, I graduated high school. Yes, I've got a Trans Am. What the heck is going on? Where were you guys? Hey, we've been here the whole time, pal. Where have you been? I've been getting worried. The butler, dead, knife, note, and then the jungle. Are you saying he's been murdered? My word, someone's been murdered? Oh my God, you're alive? And you have dinner. Hey, where's Gambo, pal? <laughs> he's fine. Now, how about that dinner? Hey, where's the soup? In your bowl, Mr. D'Agostino. Can't you see, uh, can't you tell there's nothing in my bowl? I'm dreadfully sorry, sir. I just remembered. The cook was fired last week. It must have slipped my mind. I'm afraid I'm dead on my feet. Oh my hey, gosh, <gasps> pal. My gosh, what happened to you? They do first blood, not me. Everybody, look. We're out of time. Folks, how did we do on that one? We know that the 440 six pack, six barrel in the Plymouth, A12 cars were super cool. Had a lot of standard features on them. I even told you that you could order a four speed or an automatic transmission. The question was, true or false, you could order a three speed manual transmission as well. If you guess that was false, you're my hero. You've been paying attention to graveyard cars. The three-speed was never available behind a 440 with any induction system. And it was never available behind the legendary 426 Hemi. In fact, the manual three-speed transmission was the base entry level. You didn't have to pay extra for it. So for example, 1970 Cuda 383 standard engine came with a three-speed manual transmission unless you selected something different. And the largest engine, that the three-speed manual transmission could come behind was also the 383 Super Commando or Magnum in a Dodge lineup. Now you know. I cut the ride short because it wasn't something I wanted to practice with in, in traffic. Very difficult to control in terms of 
You know, you just need to be a little bit on that gas too much, and you're in trouble. You're in trouble real quick. <laughs> you look a little shook. No, I am. <laughs> Truly. He wasn't this, expecting all that power. This He's thing. He's shook. This thing He's is. He's ready to come back. Ooh, I loved it. I loved it. The vibration was, um, of that motor was insanity. What can I say? Probably the most beautiful car that I've ever owned. All right, there goes the tail light store, 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner 392 six-speed Dana rear end car. Dream build number three for Graveyard Dreams. As it leaves, here comes dream build number four. A 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner that I took on about six months ago for a gentleman out of Cottage Grove, Oregon. This guy worked for his father and he worked hard. Don Jones is very successful. He's been in business and owns many dealerships here in the country now. But he started out washing cars for his dad. He started out sanding cars in the body shop. That was his, his job. He had to really work and earn money to be able to buy a car. And what car did he want to buy? A 1969 Plymouth Roadrunner 383 automatic. The ACV, I think, was $350, the actual cash value. And I think he paid $450. He bought it from the dealership for $450. It was A4 buff silver with a black top automatic transmission. I don't remember all of the details, but here we go. Graveyard Dreams again, a guy who right now could go out and run a check for anything he wants. I mean, he's a successful man, but he wants his old 69 Roadrunner back so he can have fun. So when he looks at the pictures of him standing next to that car, tall gangly looking guy, thin as could be, you look at those and you think, oh, that was his life though. That was the time period, that was what he did. That he was a person then, he's a person now. When he was a person then, his life revolved around that 1969 Roadrunner. This is gonna be one of the funnest stories we've ever told because it's the first time we've worked for somebody that had a dealership, a Mopar dealership back in the day. He has pictures of the dealership. He has pictures of the cars that were at the dealership all of his escapades. He was one of those guys that actually documented things with pictures. I never did. That's why I only had one picture in my 70 church. Graveyard Dreams, part of Graveyard Cars, is alive and well. And I am excited to see this car come back to life because he's adding some things to it that he wanted to have when he was young but didn't have quite the wallet to do it or maybe necessarily the shop that could do it. But he does now because it's called Graveyard Dreams. It is with a heavy heart and a humbled spirit that I have to announce the loss of our dear friend, Larry Fortner. Larry, also known as Larry's Interiors, exclusively did the upholstery work for Graveyard Cars since the beginning of the show. Over the years, we developed a strong friendship through faith, laughter, and respect. I like doing original work, so I always hit for the original work because I just love it. And I like the Mopars, and so that's what I do for a living, and I'm training my son and hoping he can take it over and keep going. I really, I love it. I think it's so neat uh, to come in here and work on a real nice, fancy car. I like working with Mark, and he's always good to me. I, I looked forward to coming doing this, and I was thinking, you know, I'm not quite there yet. I didn't get my strength back yet. But, I, but we did it, and I've been happy that we did. So why go do something else? Larry always rose to the occasion. The bigger the challenge, the more he shined, especially if he knew he was making a difference. We at Graveyard Cars owe a modicum of credit for our success to Larry Fortner. He will be missed. Godspeed, my friend.